So as a city archaeologist, I have jurisdiction over city-owned properties and any projects that need archaeology in the city of Boston, I'm in charge of executing that archaeology, writing it up and making sure it becomes available to the public. All the artifacts that we find get put into plastic bags with their context information, which says the site that they were found out, um, found at, um, exactly where within that site, the depths, and then they're stored with other artifacts from that same context. Um, those are all then put into cardboard boxes like the ones behind me and put on shelves, and that's where they stay, unless they're on display. Um, in the meantime, we try to make sure that researchers can come to this lab in order to access the collections because they do nobody favors sitting in boxes for eternity. So we try to make sure that they're stored correctly so that they're always around, but then we try to make sure that they're used as much as possible, um, whether it be for display or for research. Let me just pull some, yeah, I'm just going to grab some ones that I can just pull out and show. For me, the coolest artifacts are artifacts that tell stories. So I brought out a couple of artifacts from the city collection that I think really tell great stories. Um, this is a spear point. It's called a Neville point. That's the style of point. This is currently the oldest artifact that we know of in the city of Boston. Uh, it was found on Boston Common near the Frog Pond, which today is a really popular tourist place. But if you go back thousands of years, the Frog Pond was a natural spring. This was dropped sometime between 5,000 and 7,000 years old, uh, ago, which makes it um, about as old, if not older, than the pyramids of Egypt and Stonehenge. So here's an idea of just how far back the history of Boston goes. Another artifact I brought is a cannonball. Um, cannonballs are great just because they're cannonballs, but what makes this one really exciting is that um, we know based on its context that this is a cannonball from the Battle of Bunker Hill. So unlike most artifacts, we have an actual date for this artifact when it was used. Um, this was put into a cannon either on a ship or on land and fired at the city of Charlestown on June 17, 1775. So the last artifact I took out um, Probably the least glamorous of the artifacts. Uh, this is actually a chamber pot, so you can think of this as an indoor toilet. But what makes this really important is that this chamber pot was found in a tavern site in Charlestown that dates to the 1750s to 1770s called the Three Cranes Tavern. Based on its decorations, which you can see is very decorated for a chamber pot, um, we know that this was made at the Parker Harris Pottery next door to the Three Cranes Tavern. Um, at that time that this was made, the owner of the, of the Parker Harris Pottery was a woman. Her name was Grace Parker. She had um, lost her husband who passed away and she decided to keep her company. Grace Parker likely made the pot or decorated the pot or both. Um, th that said, this was actually found next door at the Three Cranes Tavern, which at the same time was owned by a woman also um, by the name of Mary Long. So um, we're talking about a time period where a woman-owned business was almost unheard of and it stayed like that for quite a long time. Um, so for this being the mid-1700s, um, to have two women-owned businesses that were uh, flourishing and the fact that both are represented through this pot, one because one of them made it and the other one decided because the uh, Mary Long bought it. Archaeology is actually a fairly large industry in the United States. What I do and what I've done, um, I'm part of a group that's called Cultural Resource Managers or Management. Um, we go around and do archaeological surveys on properties that are threatened. Um, so we're mostly working in reaction to development, whether that be um, large um, businesses being built or houses being built or roads and that kind of thing. Um, all the artifacts in my collection here at the City Archaeology Lab um, almost all um, are resulting from cultural resource management surveys either through the city or private in, um, companies going out and doing archaeology before these sites are going to be destroyed. Most archaeologists in the, in the U.S. work um, to help preserve sites kind of ahead of the bulldozer um, to dig up what we can find, um, write down everything that we can get out of these sites and then generally um, publish it and make it available. That's a good description for archaeology, for historic hoarders. <laughs>